It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood, a beautiful day for a neighbor. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? It's a neighborly day in this beauty. Woods, a neighborly day for a beauty. Would you be mine? Could you be mine? I have always wanted to have a neighbor just like you. I've always wanted to live in this neighborhood with you. So let's make the most of this beautiful day. Since we're together, we might as well say, would you be mine? Could you be mine? Won't you be my neighbor? Won't you please? Won't you please? Please won't you be my neighbor? Hello, television neighbor. Glad we're together again. Oh. Well, you look at that. The, 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 the phone's ringing. He 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 hello? Is, is this Ni Nigel, um, uh, 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 Bruno, Bruno, uh, Lexington, I'm speaking. Wow, you must have caller ID, Victor. Yes, it is. This is Bruno. Oh, your first name is Nigel, sir. I know, but my friends call me Bruno. If, if you want to call me Nigel and be formal, that's fine. Um, I... I I heard from Mc, Mc, McFeely that he gave me a letter yesterday um, t t telling me that um, we, my television neighbors and I are allowed to come to your uh, astronomy exhibit t t today. You mean Mr. McFeely? Yes, Mr. McFeely. Yes, let's let's not show him disrespect by just calling him McFeely. Mr. McFeely. I mean, you wouldn't like it if I called you Sprinkle, would you? Oh, no. No, 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 no. Well, Mr. McFeely was absolutely correct. Um, I'm looking forward to your visit at my astronomy studio. All right. Well, then, thank you, Nigel. We we will be there in just a few minutes. Okay, Victor. See you soon. All right. Well, let's just go. Go and visit Nigel Bruno Lexington Astronomy Ex Exhibit Building. C come come along. Victor! N N Nigel, good to see you. Have a seat. You can call me Bruno if you'd like. I, I, I consider you a close friend. I'd rather call you Nigel. All righty. Thanks for having me and my television neighbors at your ast astronomy exhibit building. Well, th thank you for coming. You're very welcome. I would like for you to introduce you to my te television friend. This is Mr. Nigel Bruno Lexington. Hello there, television friend. How are you this morning? Oh, fine. Well, good, good. Glad to hear it. So what's up, Victor? Well, um, my television neighbors and I were wondering how old were you when you first got into the ash, 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 astronomy uh, business? Well, I wouldn't call my first venture a business, but when I was eight years old, my parents bought me and gave me for Christmas my first little telescope. And it was only a three power telescope, but oh my goodness, when I looked up at the moon and at Jupiter and at Saturn, I thought I was just in heaven. It was so beautiful. 
And that's when I was smitten with the astronomy bug, as they'd say. Now, will you please show us some of your uh, s stars, which are some of my three puppets? Well, let, let's see what you've got hidden behind your back there. Oh, yes, yes. This beauty is affectionately known as the Flamingo Constellation. You can see the eye of the flamingo. You can see the beak of the flamingo. You can see the flamingo's little wings. And you notice what's missing? Hardly any tail on the flamingo. That's because they don't have much of a tail. So that's called the Flamingo Constellation. Here, oh my goodness. Here we have the Pelican Constellation. Again, much like the Flamingo Constellation, you can see the eyes of the pelican. You can see its beak with the big pouch underneath. You can see its strong, powerful wings, but unlike the flamingo constellation, the pelican constellation clearly has a tail. That's how you tell them apart in the nighttime sky. Last but not least is the owl constellation. Similar to the flamingo and the pelican, the owl has eyes, but they're a little difficult to see because they're half closed. The owl also has a beak and wings and a split tail. See that? And it's smaller in the nighttime sky than the flamingo and the pelican constellations, much as the owl in real life nature is smaller than the flamingo and the pelican. Um, now Nigel. Yes, Victor. I would feel honored about visiting your ast astronomy exhibit building tomorrow and see some of your other planets and moons. Okay, I'd love to have you. But unfortunately, I, I need to get back to my place. Okay, well thank you for coming for a visit. Thank you, television friend, for coming along. Bye-bye, Victor. Isn't Nigel the most uh, exciting man I ever knew? I really appreciate his fine work and the things he does at the, that neighborhood exhibit building. Well, we have just enough time for some make believe before I say my ending line and before me and my mom got hit the road. So, let's, why don't we just make believe that um, Doc, Doc, Dr. Bill, uh, played by my d dad, is helping, uh, J J James Michael J J Jones with a scientific experiment that is really run out of luck. 
So why don't we make believe some more about that now? As we pretend that the tr the the trolley is on its way to the neighborhood of make believe. Are you ready to go, trolley? All right. Ho ho ho! Well, hello, Victor. It's Doctor Bill. How are you today? Uh, that's not Victor. Who is that? We do work on mo modern, modern scientific ex ex experiments, Doctor Bill. Yes, that is for certain. And my name is J James Michael J Jones. James Michael? THE James Michael Jones? Yes. Wow! I am honored to meet you. Now, what kind of scientific experiment are you going to help my young d daughter Dr. Bill? Well, I thought that today we might be able to teach her about the vacuum of space. The vacuum of space. That is correct. Well, Trolley, we'll have to prepare for for our latest experiment in the neighborhood of make-believe the, the next time. So, good, goodbye. Huh. I, I wonder what's gonna happen with that little experiment of theirs. Well, we'll pretend some more about that the next time. You, you know, it really gives me a good feeling to be able to talk to you about such fun things. I I hope that someday you'll remember how important it is, how much I love you, and I hope th that when you grow up to become a scientist, you'll understand the real hopes and dreams of being loved not only by your parents, but the real part inside of you too. It's such a good feeling to know you're alive. It's such a happy feeling. You're growing inside and when you wake up ready to say, I think I'll make a snappy new day. It's such a good feeling, a very good feeling, the feeling you know that I'll be back when, when the, the day is new and I'll have more ideas for you and you'll have things you want to talk about, I will too. You always make each day and each week a special one for me. You know how by just your being yourself. And I love being your television neighbor. And I'll see you next time, television neighbors. Goodbye.